Hello, everyone. Happy Women's History Month, and welcome to our second Unapologetically Free workshop. Unapologetically Free is an initiative brought to you by UNCF, Thurgood Marshall Fund, and the Steve Fund, which includes Healthy Mind Studies, conferences for faculty, staff, students, and a series of workshops. Today's workshop is Survival versus Thrival, Reimagining Thriving Societies and Communities for Girls and Young Women. This will be recorded and made available to you online after this session. While participants are muted on the webinar, please feel free to use the Q&A function to ask any questions and respond to questions in the chat. We love chat engagement. Um, so I am Brandi Pratlow, I use she her pronouns, and I'm the Vice President of Programs and Services at the Steve Fund, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. The Steve Fund focuses on supporting the mental health and emotional well-being of young people of color. The Steve Fund works with colleges and universities, nonprofits, researchers, mental health experts, families, and young people to promote programs and strategies that build understanding and assistance for the mental and emotional health of the nation's young people of color. I am so very excited to introduce our presenter, our facilitator extraordinaire today, Tiana MSW, affectionately known in her community as the Wellness Bay, is a holistic mental health practitioner, founder and wellness coach, consultant, and associate therapist. Yes, all of those things. Tiana's passions lie in helping people seek their higher purpose through ra radical healing and collective care. Her practice is rooted in her background and training as a registered clinical therapist. Tiana is a fierce advocate for accessible and relatable wellness services and practices for Black and Brown communities, LGBTQIA+, queer folks, low-income, and oppressed communities. Soul-free wellness is the manifestation of her commitment to uplifting and amplifying wellness for all. So thank you all for being here and I will pass it off to Tiana. Oh my gosh, Brandy, thank you so much for that introduction. And thank you all for being here. I am so grateful and honored to join space with you, especially during Women's History Month, Women's History Month. And I know, you know, Black History Month is in February, but we celebrate Black History 365. So this is a belated happy Black History Month in combination with Women's History Month. So thank you for being here. I'm so grateful to the Steve Fund. And as Brandy shared, um, you know, I have a multi-layered history of, of all the things that I do. So most importantly, um, I'm a mental health specialist with the Steve Fund. So I do presentations like this, support circles and um, workshops that support young people of color. And I am a therapist. Um, I'm located in Oakland. I'm doing some telehealth services right now. And I work with black and brown people couples and families. So that's a little bit about me. And again, grateful to be here with you today in our conversation about survival and thrival with you all. Okay. Right, so some intentions for the session today, we're gonna talk about what does it mean to survive and thrive as black women and girls. We're gonna highlight some black women leaders who are also surviving and thriving and who inspires you. Right. We're going to discuss and reflect on what it means to build a legacy in positive future thinking. We'll have a fun activity later on future me activity. And then we're going to talk a little bit about wellness strategies to support you all in your survival and thrival, whether that's education and your life. Right. So those are some of the intentions. So today, I hope that you brought some journaling materials or some writing materials that could be on the computer, that could be on your notebook. I have mine with me too. This is gonna be a great way for us to engage because there are moments where we're gonna stop and pause and reflect, okay? There is the chat feature. So even if you have a question, you can go straight to the chat. I will get to that um, and make sure that I'm hearing your voices. You're just as involved in this presentation as I am. So be present, show up. Um, and I want to feel your energy, right? Ask meaningful and thoughtful questions. And again, this is about uplifting you um, as students, as participants in this space. All right. So again, um, engaging, again, chat. I know that the mic feature is not enabled, but you can be in the chat. We'll have the journaling opportunities and some activities. We have the closed caption option if you need it and Q&A if you're feeling a little shy about asking a question, but we're an intimate group, so we should be able to share together, okay? 
All right. So this is just a happy Women's History Month. Um, again, just wanted to highlight some really phenomenal faces of the past year. And I wanted to start with Dr. Corbett, Dr. Kazbika Corbett, who um, was instrumental in creating and doing research on the COVID-19 vaccine. Phenomenal Black woman scientist who's really representing for us all. There's Kentanji, Kentanji Brown, who is the, um, she was not first Black woman to be nominated in the Supreme Court. So she is making waves in our politics. And of course, one of my favorites, Quinta Brunson, who started off as a you know, social media influencer, moved into writer positions, now producer and actress in her own show, Abbott Elementary. Anyone have watched Ale Abbott Elementary in the group? It's one of my favorite shows right now. Rajai said, yes, yes. Love Abbott and love that Quinta is like, you know, someone who was just a regular Black woman just showing up and is making waves. So just wanted to highlight some faces, some phenomenal women leaders who are making strides. Yes. Anyone you all want to shout out? Phenomenal, phenomenal Black women um, who are making strides and waves in your life. Someone you want to acknowledge. Why don't you type it in the chat? Who do you want to shout out? I shouted out Quinta. I also want to shout out my mom just for being amazing and supportive. What about y'all? Don't be shy. Who would you like to shout out? Yeah, Brandy said mom. Amazing. Anosa, yes, holding down tech. Thank you, Anosa. Okay, Taylor says stepmom. Amazing, while your father was ill, that's awesome, okay. Brandy says, single mom holding it down. Yes, absolutely. Love these affirmations and the shout outs. Great. All right, let's keep it moving. So I just want to name, yes, I see uh, Talia. If I said your name correctly, um, she, your mom is a single woman of four and working on her undergrad degree. Yeah, shout out to your mom, furthering her education. That is amazing. All right. So I wanna talk about some facts, right? So how are we celebrating black women and girls at HBCUs and um, predominantly black institutions in communities, right? So the percentage of women enrollment at HBCUs increased from 53% in 1976 to 64% in 2021. And they've shown that within the last year that those numbers have definitely increased, right? HBCUs have also graduated 46% of Black women who earn degrees in STEM, and they account for almost 30% of Black graduates in science and engineering doctorate programs, which means we are making waves in the STEM field, okay? And just to kind of hone in on one person, the entrepreneur Janice Bryant Howard, she's the first Black woman to run a billion dollar business, and she earned her undergraduate from North Carolina AT&T State University, the largest HBCU, right? So this is an opportunity to just see the numbers, see what's out there, and that Black women in particular are definitely making strides in our education, furthering our education, higher education, and taking up space right? Because that's what we de deserve to do, take up space, okay? All right, so we're going to do a little word association in our um, next slide. And so when you hear the word surviving, what's the first word or first couple of words that come to mind? If you can engage in the chat, what does surviving, when, that, when you hear that, what comes up for you? Rajay says struggle, yep. Yeah. Resiliency, thank you, Sylvia. Love that, who else? Survival, what comes up for you? Kate said making it, yeah. Love that, sustaining, thank you, Taylor. Talia said the struggle to get through the day but prospering at the end of the day, love that, yeah. Alice said, barely making it. Mm -hmm. Okay, about five more seconds here. Seeing a lot of struggle, sustaining. Okay. All right, so it's good to see what's sitting with you when we think of surviving, right? Let's go to our next word. 
when you hear the word thriving, what shows up for you? What's that statement or word that's coming up? Thriving. Let us know in the chat. When you're thriving, what comes up? What comes up in thriving? Victoria says prospering. Yeah. Alice says being present and alive. Love that. Talisa, Talia says becoming greater than you were before, grinding. Okay. Okay, Talia. Greater than you were before. I like that. Get five more seconds here. I want to hear from some more voices. Thriving. Kate says blooming. I love that, Kate. Blooming. All right. So we have some really present words when we think of both surviving and thriving. Sylvia says elevating. Love that. Love that. Okay. Right. So we have both surviving and thriving, and we're going to hold both themes today as we go throughout this presentation. Okay. But one thing I want to make clear, and we can go to the next slide. Um, one thing I want to make clear as we talk about survival mode, and that's where we're going to start, and we could go to the next slide here too, that surviving does not equal thriving, right? You all have actually completely different words when you talked about survival, right? Barely making it, like, you know, pushing it towards the end of the day, and then thriving was like blooming, right? Elevating. Two different energies, right? And so when we think about our history as Black women and girls with survival and thrival, we're holding two different experiences, right? So let's talk a little bit about like what some of the historical experiences might be of survival, survival in specific, right? So these are areas or concepts in our lives that show up perpetually just because of who we are in our identities, right? Imposter phenomenon, aka imposter syndrome, the feeling like you're a fraud, the feeling like someone's going to find you out, right, and expose you. We often experience this even outside of the classroom in our everyday lives, right? And this is because systems and structures tokenize us, stereotype us, right? And then we feel that sense of pressure to show up, right? And that goes right along into the superwoman trope or the, the strong Black woman identity, right? Feeling like we always have to show up as resilient, courageous, strong, right? Um, we, we hold down the family. We, we're there for our friends. We're the strong friend, right? This is another identity that we've often taken on in our lives, right? Let me just check on the chat, make sure I didn't miss anyone. Okay. Um, Exclusion and marginaliza marginalization, right? Meaning that in sometimes in spaces we are invisible, but it's not by coincidence, right? Our voices aren't seen and heard. And this is not a coincidence. This is about the systems and structures that were set up or have been created to cast us out, right? Make us feel unworthy, right? And all of this is a manifestation of white supremacy, Right, the ways in which systemic structures, racism, um, classism, um, the ways in which our gender identity is threatened, how all of that shows up in an oppressive and racist way. Right, so that's typically how survival mode shows up for us and beyond. Right, and beyond. But these are some, um, these are some dip, uh, the main tenets of the ways that survival mode shows up. Right. Okay, let's go to our next slide. So I want to play um, a brief clip by Jalon Agnew. And this, and this woman is a therapist and she talks about this idea of survival mode and trauma in the black community. And I wanna make this relatable to our conversation around survival mode. So we're gonna let this play. Oh, Taylor said, I'm, you know, Jalon. Oh, amazing. That is so amazing. Um, so let's listen to um, what she is going to name about trauma in our community. The more you cry, the less you pee. Those are the words of the noticed psychologist and expert in trauma, Mercedes Mann, my grandmother. <laughs> that was my first lesson in Black folk mental health. 
In layman's terms, stop all that damn crying. In more clinical terms, it's a passed down coping mechanism used to teach the internalization of trauma to maintain survival. It's giving very much, this is what I learned, so this is what I'm gonna teach you. I am a black therapist with a black therapist and I find human behavior fascinating. I've been in the field for 16 years and I have a private practice where I work with majority black women. In my observation, black people are dope. <laughs> despite stolen lands and stolen bodies and stolen culture, despite laws and psychology and science skewed and used with white supremacy in order to justify the inhumane treatment, black people have mastered survival, surviving and living and loving and worshiping and being so damn beautiful. But I wonder how, what protective factors are at play? So I have a theory, right out with me on this one. Trauma responses. In order to maintain survival, black people have integrated trauma responses into the culture. So much so that we hand it down from generation to generation under the guise of values and traditions. Let's get into it. Let's talk science. Trauma responses are a physiological reaction and response to a perceived harmful event, a threat, or a threat to survival. A necessary system, it was wired into the human nervous system in order to keep us safe. So if there was a bear in the wild, this system would kick in to maintain survival. While it's necessary, it was never intended to be a long-term solution. The body is not meant to stay in that state of arousal. It's supposed to be short-term. Keep that in mind. All right, boom, let's talk American history. During the transatlantic slave trade, Europeans built the foundation of this country on the raping, pillaging, enslaving, dehumanizing of Africans. They used mental, physical, and spiritual warfare in order to integrate white supremacy into the violence. They skewed psychology, religion, and science, all to justify this treatment. For example, drape to mania, which is when enslaved Africans would attempt to run away, was once a mental health diagnosis. So with all that said, traumatizing Black bodies is as American as the strange fruit in apple pie. When a community is traumatized over and over, it causes a collective trauma experience. So when we put the science and the history together, white supremacy is the bear. White supremacy is the bear. But let's take it a step further. When I started, I said, the more you cry, the less you pee as a clinical intervention. Due to the Black trauma experience, my grandmother had learned and subsequently was teaching the internalization of emotions is a safety concern. To externalize. All right, I think we, we got enough there. That was hearty. Um, and, and love hearing Jalan's voice. And uh, uh, for anyone who knows her in the chat, yes, just let her know that we're uplifting her voice and her knowledge. Um, any reactions to this video, right? Talking about trauma responses, what survival mode looks like in our mental health, a little bit of the history, right? Think about your word, think about your surviving word. What connects here? What were your reactions? What came up for you? What were your takeaways? We'll dive into the chat. I know it was, you know, it was heavy. You know, it's it's heavy hearing about our mental health and just the generational trauma we've experienced. Any thoughts here? Alice said survival is connected to conditioning. Absolutely right, being conditioned in our, our social world, in systems, right, even back since slavery. Yeah. Thanks, Alice. Anyone else? We hear maybe from one more person. What are you sitting with? Yeah, 
you know, that conditioning, right? Like think about the ways in which collective trauma shows up. So I'm gonna let you all continue to think and we're gonna talk what happens in survival mode. We can go to the next slide here. So um, as Jalan mentioned, when our body seeks safety during stressful, traumatic or threatening situations, there is a response, right? There's a collective response. And generally that looks like fight, flight, freeze and fawn, right? Fight, flight, freeze or fawn. So fighting means facing any perceived threat head on. So you're just kind of going towards it, right? The flight is the running away from the danger, right? When this, when you feel like you need to escape, the freezing is when you're not able to move kind of like you're in your body, right? And fawning is immediately acting, trying to please, to avoid the conflict, like trying to diffuse as, as quickly as possible, right? So we've all experienced survival mode and sometimes we don't even notice when it's happening. So is anyone, does anyone feel like they fight, they flight, they freeze or they fawn? right? Taylor says we start to become numb to it and live with it. It becomes that's just life as opposed to explicitly acknowledging it as trauma. Absolutely, Taylor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that comment. Yeah, we do start to become numb and kind of carrying on as usual. And that's how that, that survival mode builds, you know? Has anyone else experienced this? Do you connect with that fight, flight, freeze, or fawn? Kate said, I go between flight, freeze, and fawning. Yeah, sometimes you can just be in multiple areas of survival mode, right? Thank you, Kate, for sharing, right? I think at one point in my life, I was a little bit in the flight area. Sometimes it's freezing, right? When I feel this sense of overwhelm, right? Anyone else want to chime in? What do you experience? Great responses so far. Talia says, um, or Alice says, all of them, depending on the situation, sure. Yeah, they could all show up. Talia says, agreeing with Taylor, feel like we all experience them within different circumstances. I would say right now that I'm in the fight era. Yes, yes. Sometimes that fight gets activated, right? And it's not to say that any of these categories are bad or better than the others, right? They just all show up very differently based on the circumstances and based on our identity. So think of how survival mode shows up for you as a black woman, right? So let's actually get into that. How does survival mode show up in education for us? Next slide, yep. So sometimes survival mode can show up when we're faced with competition in comparison, right? So if we think about our communities, whether we're at a HBCU or a predominantly black institution, we can still feel that sense of competition in comparison. We're in community, but it doesn't mean that we always feel sound and grounded in community because we're we're having an internal experience, right? You might feel isolated when you're when you leave your home community, right? Leaving family, leaving the friends that you know. Then there's also this, like if we think externally, this intersectional impact of COVID-19 and racial trauma. Think about everything we've endured in the last three years, right? From it, witnessing, observing police violence, right? on black women, on trans women, on our communities, and then how we personally experienced COVID-19. We had to go into survival mode, right? And then school, right? How did school play into the picture of that? How did, how did distance learning play into that, right? It changed our identity as students. And then the pressure of maintaining family and community expectations, right? So think about that strong black woman trope, right? That idea that we have to show up for everyone. We have to please other people, right? We have to keep folks together. All of that's at play, right? So when you think about the fight, flight, freeze, fawn, all of those responses, these things may come up, especially as we think about education, right? So now let's think about what survival mode looks and sounds like. Let's get familiar with the language, right? So it can look like a sense of urgency with your assignments. And that can sound like I'm at my max or a capacity. I have to do this now. There's so much to do, so little time, right? It can look like overextending yourself. Then you get kind of foggy, right? Like everything's a blur. It could look overwhelming and exhausting, right? And it could also look like perfectionism. And that can sound like I can't be a disappointment. I can't disappoint others. It's all on me. And I have to be strong for everyone, right? Especially if you're a first generation college student, right? A lot of this can be amplified and put out there. I was a first generation college student. So I know what all of this sounds like. 
So survival mode may work for you a little bit over time, right? So let's talk about the mental health impact. Next slide, yep. So how it could show up in our mental health, this sense of perfectionism, right? Feeling isolated from your own community, right? Whether you're at an HBCU or a predominant Black institution, you could still isolate from community, feel distant. Questioning your own sense of belonging or your path, right? Feeling anxious, falling into that identity again of feeling like the strong Black woman, right? Depression, the pressure of Black excellence, right? especially within your institutions, like how much this message could be pushed, but also how you might be feeling in survival mode. This sense of self-comparison and the fear of disappointing others. Right? Does anyone identify with this? Some of these impacts? Well, take a look, what shows up for you? What shows up in that, in this impact? Do you ever feel these things? Do you ever feel these things as students at your institution? What comes up? Anyone wanna chime in in the chat? Yes, Alice said, perfectionism, trying to prove I'm worthy. Yeah, absolutely. And this can this survival mode can question our sense of worthiness, whether it's education, whether it's our relationships, friendships, community, right? Absolutely. Thanks, Alice, for sharing. Anyone else? Kate said isolation from community and anxiety, questioning sense of belonging. Absolutely, right? This can be in a, in a survival mode can often be an internal experience, right? So likely, no one would ever know you're going through this. Right. Great responses. Okay. So I want us, um, Sylvia says, all of these things come up with the students you work with, especially perfectionism, fear of disappointment, and self comparison. Yeah. So hearing them talk about this out loud and the stories that they're sharing on their campuses, I imagine like it's a lot to hold. And Sylvia, I'm sure that you relate in many ways too. So I'm, I'm hopeful that you're able to provide some support and insight here. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Talia says, I feel anxious plenty of times during the year when you're on campus. It can feel like um, you're overwhelmed with work and it can seem as, this, as though you won't make the deadline. Yeah, that sense of urgency, right? Like holding multiple responsibilities and then feeling urgent about everything, you know? So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, y'all were diving deep. All right, so we're gonna go to our next, this is just a prompt that kind of ties this together, right? So think about when you are in survival mode in your education setting. Think about what it looked like for you and what did it sound like for you in specific, right? So we're just gonna take a moment to pause here, maybe just for two minutes. You wanna engage a little bit of writing. What does survival mode look and sound like for you, especially in your education setting? You can jot down this prompt. You can also revisit this too after our session. I think this is gonna be good to continue to think about. And if any of this information is just feeling hard, you know, it's kind of maybe triggering to think about survival mode, just invite yourself to like a breath, you know, inhaling in through the nose, Exhaling out through the mouth, just take a moment. Just take a moment. Okay. So hope that you were able to jot down this prompt, maybe a couple of ideas that are coming up for you. And I know that, you know, we, we talked about what it looks and sounds like a lot of you were sharing through the chat. So thank you for being very vulnerable. Okay. Now let's talk about healing from survival mode. What does healing look like? So there are some wellness strategies, mental health and wellness strategies that we can think about, think about, feel about, and do, 
right? So I organized a category of activities based on thinking, feeling, and doing that can support us during survival mode. And this may not be an exhaustive list, but this is really going to cover ways and to, to support yourself in survival mode in education, and it can be applicable elsewhere, right? The other parts of our lives, right? So let's take a look about thinking. How do we want to think? Activities that will activate us, right? Let's go to the thinking strategies. Next slide. Okay. So think, think about your stressors. These are the things that stress you out, basically, right? The things that are posing a challenge or roadblocks, just naming them are, is very powerful, right? So name those stressors. Think about what you need to feel safe and supported inside and outside of the classroom. What makes you feel safe? Right? What makes you feel supported in that way where you can go for comfort, go to be real, be, being honest, right? And think about what resources you need in your campus setting to help you manage stressors, right? So if that's a counseling center, right? If there's a wellness room or a wellness center, right? Maybe there's a support group on campus. Think about what resources do you have around you, right? Okay. Let's get into the feel. So being honest about your feelings and identifying them, right? I included a feeling wheel over here and I know it might be a little small, but anytime that you're having trouble locating how you feel, just look up a feeling wheel, right? Go to Google and it helps you kind of expand, expand your vocabulary on feelings because sometimes I'm okay, I'm good. That's not enough. And we're often masking those feelings, right? Right. Also talking to a professional counselor, having a therapist who can support you, especially one that looks like you, right? Who can hold these experiences of survival mode and start a journaling practice. We're doing a little bit of that today, taking moments to think and reflect and, and write and just get that out, right? One of my habits, I'm working on journaling every day for five minutes and a little bit of meditation. And it's really helping me to feel my feelings and sit with, um, yeah, what I'm just processing, even my stressors, right? All right, let's go to the do. So do, move your body with exercise, stretching, yoga, Pilates. There's so much that's out there. There's so much that's free. There's so much on YouTube. So making sure you get some movement in. And also scheduling breaks to disconnect from academics, tasks, and studying. And sometimes that means stepping outside of your friendship group. It might be your cohort, right? Maybe you need to make friends with someone else in another program or major, right? So you have some different conversations going on, right? And open up to friends and your cohort and your mentors, right? Survival mode manifests when we keep all of that inside. Right. And just know that they're like, even on this chat, there's so many of us who are connecting to each other's experiences, facing similar mental health impacts. This is important stuff. Right. So now that we've outlined some think, some do, some feel activities, um, what are, we're going to go to that next slide. What are a couple of activities that you think you can commit to? Right. Think about what was in the think, in the do, in the feel. What are some activities that you would like to try yourself? So if you can go to the chat, what resonated with you, with you from the think, do, and feel? All right, so like I said, I'm starting the journaling, right? That's helping me feel in that area, right? What about you all from the think, do, and feel? What's coming up? What do you want to try? Maybe list one activity, two activities. What was your takeaway from these strategies? Or what are you already doing? I'd love to hear some voices in the chat. Kate said more body movement with exercise or dancing. Love that. Yes, dancing is movement. Dance breaks are movement. Absolutely. Alice says in therapy. Yeah, right. That's being proactive. Talking to someone. That hits the feel. That hits the do, right? 
Taylor says stretch and breathe with intention. Love that. Yes. That's movement. That's intentionality. That's feeling. Thank you for your responses. All right. So continue to think about how you want to think, feel, and do to move through survival mode, right? Brandy says pausing while outside and feeling the sun, the rain, the wind. Yeah. Getting mindful, right? Getting into your external environment, getting outside. Well, thank you for your responses. So let's look at a uh, a survivor hero, someone who has survived as an example of what moving through survival mode means. It's one of my favorite heroes and examples, powerful Black woman, Angela Davis, who is an activist, philosopher, an academic, and a writer, right? What has she survived through? She survived the FBI's most wanted list, right, for her political activism. She survived being fired from UCLA, um, for her membership as a part of the com uh, Communist Party, right? And she survived imprisonment. And even through all of these different complications and these struggles and the racism and oppression, oppression that she's experienced as a Black woman, she has still been able to show up for herself, to thrive. We'll talk about thriving in different ways, right? She's still an educator. She's still an activist. Right, she was able to overcome that survival mode that she had to live in, and I'm sure she experiences it in so many different ways. Right, so she is just one example of a survivor hero who is out here just continuing to educate and drop knowledge on us. Right, so some affirmations I want to provide for you if you're in that survival place, say these to yourself I am unapologetic about healing from survival mode. I am, and we are worthy of healing from historical trauma. Think about that trauma that Jalan named, right? I deserve and we deserve to be celebrated for how far we have come, how far we have come, right? All right. So to pick us back up, to help us move from this, this uh, conversation about survival, I just want to introduce Mahogany L. Brown. She's going to drop some knowledge on us around Black girl magic with this amazing poem to lift up our spirits again. They say you ain't supposed to be here, black girl. You ain't supposed to wear red lipstick. You ain't supposed to wear high heels. You ain't supposed to smile in public. You ain't supposed to smile nowhere, black girl. You ain't supposed to be no more than a girlfriend. You ain't supposed to get married. You ain't supposed to want no dream that big. You ain't supposed to dream at all. You ain't supposed to do nothing but carry babies and carry fellas and carry weeds, and carry silence, and carry families, and carry confusion, and carry a nation, but never an opinion. Because you ain't supposed to have nothing to say, Black girl, not unless it's a joke. Because you ain't supposed to love yourself, Black girl. You ain't supposed to find nothing worth saving in all that brown. You ain't supposed to know that Tina, Beyonce, Cecily, Shonda, Rhymes, Shine, 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 Black girl. You ain't supposed to love your mind. You ain't supposed to love. You ain't supposed to be loved up on. You only supposed to pose voodoo child. Look, like you're supposed to pop out babies and hide the stretch marks. You're supposed to be still. So still, they think you statue. So still, they think you chalk outline. So still, they keep thinking you stone. Until you look more Medusa than Viola Davis. Until you sign more Shanae than Kerry Washington. Until you more side-eyed than Michelle Obama on the Tuesday, but you tell them you are more than a hot coming to Washington set. You are Kunta Kinte's kin. You are a black girl worth remembering, and you are a threat. Knowing yourself, you are a threat. Loving yourself, you are a threat. Loving your kin, you are a threat. Loving your children, you black girl magic, you black girl fly, you black girl brilliant, you black girl wonder, you black girl shine, you black girl bloom, you black girl, black girl. And you turning into a beautiful black woman right before our eyes. All right, so any reactions for Mahogany? What did you all think about that poem? How did that feel in your spirit? Couple of reactions. Victoria says, this gives me chills every time I hear it. Amazing, yep, same here, Victoria, same here. Anyone else? Anyone else? How did that make you feel in this moment? 
All right, imagine you're just resonating with it, sitting with it. Let's talk about thrival. Let's pick up the energy and talk about thriving. We talked about surviving. Let's talk about thriving. So what does thriving refer to, right? This is living and showing up unapologetically free, right? So when we are able to move past that survival mode with those tactics that we talked about, um, when we start to integrate wellness and mental health routines, being attentive to our mental health, what's showing up for us, and creating and building a legacy. We're going to talk a little bit about legacy building and why it's so important too, right? So this is what thriving generally refers to. Sometimes it doesn't always mean success or being perfect or showing up as your best self, right? Thriving is being able to move past survival mode right? Tending to our, our internal self, our external self, and how we want to show up in our identities, right? So what does the thriving look like in education? I have some stats for us that can show us a little bit about that, right? So more, more facts. Black women get 64.1% of bachelor's degrees, 71.5% of master's degrees, and 65.9% of doctoral, medical, and dental degrees right? And among the nation's 101 HBCUs, 22 Black women are serving as interims or permanent presidents of the institutions, right? This is big, right? Thriving is taking up that space. Someone said elevating, someone said blooming, and these are all the ways in which we're doing exactly that in education, taking up that space, right? So let's talk about what thriving looks and sounds like, what it looks and sounds like, okay? So it looks like, think about survival mode. There was a lot of urgency. This is less urgency, right? In your assignments and tasks, more pace, right? Uh, curiosity in academic material, connecting and relating to the material that you're invested in in your program, right? Having aligned internship and mentorship opportunities. Like, so outside of the classroom, you're taking up space, finding alignment. In meeting academic goals on your terms, right? On your terms. And it can sound like this material might be challenging, but I believe in my abilities, right? I'm going to celebrate my small wins and my strides. I have support and will seek support with my when my academics feel hard. I made the right decision. So I think you can already see how the survival voice and look and how the thrival voice and look feel different, right? And it's not just about confidence, it's around a positive self-narrative, right? Believing that you can expand and bloom in all the beautiful words that you all used, right? So that's thriving. Has anyone, does anyone relate to this, right? What is your thriving language? What do you, what comes up for you here? Right? Do you resonate with this? Does this show up for you? anyone feel like they're thriving just kind of based on what it looks like what it sounds like on your campus in education what does this look like pause here for a moment what's resonating with you Okay, come on. I want to hear about the thriving stuff. We talked about a lot of the survival stuff. I want to hear a couple of voices in the thriving area. Give it 10 more seconds here. All right, I'll let you all resonate on this, but definitely want to hear more voices as we continue to think about thriving. Oh, Alice said, I've become more curious about my trauma and healing. Yeah, that's being attentive to your mental health, right? That's important. That shows that you're ready to bloom and expand and elevate. Okay, so legacy. I, I wanted to touch on what it means to build a legacy as we're in thrival mode. So when you think of the word legacy, what's the first word that comes up for you? We can get into the chat. First word that comes up for us when we think about legacy. What does legacy mean to you? Victoria says family, Brandy says long lasting. 
That's awesome. Long lasting in family. Yes. Anyone else? Long lasting in family. Wealth in all forms, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial. I love that, Alice. Yes. Wealth in all forms. Wealth related to finances and beyond. Beautiful. Beautiful. So let's talk a little bit about legacy and we're going to skip that slide. Yep. So what does feel, building a thriving legacy look like? The reason why legacy is so important is because it's, it allows us to connect to our future goals and aspirations. Moving beyond thrival, survival mode means that we're able to break out of that place of trauma or stress and look towards the future a bit, right? Not overthinking it, but looking towards the future, right? So it looks like knowing your why. What is my purpose what am I what am I doing in this space? Why did I choose this major? Why did I choose this program? Why did I choose this institution? Right? What is my why? But also knowing who you are not, right? How do you want to define yourself? Visualizing your future. See yourself there. Can you plant yourself five years into the future? What does that look like? Right? Do you know your values? Right. What has your family taught you? What are those things that are actually benefiting you that can benefit your community, right? How do you want to show up for yourself? And then value to your community. What can you give back? How can you show up for your community, right? Whether that's the HBCU or your predominant Black institution, how do you want to show up? What is meaningful for you, right? So that's adding value to your community, right? So building a thriving legacy, it doesn't mean you have to be rich or wealthy, but it's embracing a, abundance in who you are, what you see in your future, right? And how you explore your values for yourself and for your community, right? So let's think about how we want to thrive in wellness. We're gonna go back to think, feel, and do. Think, feel, and do, okay? So think, think about what, where you want to be and who you want to be five years from now. I call that the magical question in therapy, right? Like exploring where you want to be on the other side. Get creative, right? Think about who could support you in thriving and building a legacy, right? And think about the resources. This is similar to even in survival mode. Think about the resources on your campus that can contribute to you thriving, right? What's already there? What's already around you that can help you thrive? Let's talk about the feel right? Engaging in mindfulness skills. I think that was Brandy that's saying going outside, feel the sun, right? Meditation, deep breathing. We took a moment to breathe, right? Confiding in your mentors and instructors on your aspirations and goals. It's okay to share that with them, right? So that they can support you in thriving in the classroom. And think about your limiting beliefs or negative self-narratives, the things in, internally in your mind that are keeping you from feeling like you're a thriving person, a thriving Black woman, right? I work with a lot of my clients around negative self-narratives and how to shift them, right? And it's not just about thinking more positively. Sometimes it's just coming up with an alternative, right? A different thought, a different way of feeling, okay? Now let's talk about doing. Find your hype team and build that hype team, right? To help you thrive, to remind you, remember, reminding you of your purpose, Pace yourself and challenge your perfectionism, right? Remember, perfectionism has a mental health impact from survival mode. Perfectionism is rooted in a place of survival. And then writing a letter to your future self to remind yourself of your goals and your journey. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to introduce that activity so you all could take for yourselves, maybe start a little bit here, but then you can continue to do this after this session, right? Okay. So... What are some think, do, and feel strategies, some activities that I named here that, that'll help you thrive? Moving from survival mode, healing from survival mode, and thriving, right? What are one or two activities from what I just shared that you're interested in, or maybe you already do, right? So for example, it sounds like Brandy already gets into that space of, of not just meditation, but just like having mindful moments, right? What about you all? Think, do, and feel when it comes to thriving, right? Do you want to think about five years from now? Do you want to confide in others? Do you already have a hype team, right? I want to hear from at least two people here. 
How do you want to think, do, and feel? When it comes to thriving, All right, don't be shy. This is your opportunity to start your thriving plan. Let's get into it. Alice said, be fierce and fearless. Okay. I love that, Alice. Being fierce and feel fearless. That's a feel and that's a do. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Who else? How do you want to thrive? How do you want to feel? How do you want to think? How do you want to do this? Let's hear from one more person. One more person. And no, for me, I'm continuing to build my hype team, challenging my perfectionism. All right. All right. The last 10 seconds. This is your last opportunity to share. Well, you can continue in the chat, but we want to hear it. Your think, your do, your feel when it comes to thriving. What's one activity? What's one takeaway for you? All right. So continue to think on that, how you want to thrive, whether it's these activities and beyond. Okay, so I want to have some thriving examples. Um, I just discovered this podcast and it is an amazing podcast with four doctors and all of these um, doctors graduated in the STEM field and at HBCUs. So Dr. Myla Patterson-Smith, Dr. Shante Williams, Dr. Charlita Irvin-Joseph, and Dr. Alethea Tillman. They banded together to create the Black Scientist Cooperative Podcast, and it's a way to encourage the Black community to make informed science-based decisions on health and wellness, right? So their episodes are really great. They talk about their lives, they talk about their journeys, and they really break down science in a way that's relatable and accessible. So I highly encourage the Black Science Cooperative Podcast, whether you're in STEM or beyond, right? I think there's a little bit of something for everyone, okay? So um, yes, this is um, some thriving leaders and figures that I want you all to take note of, all right? Next slide. So think about folks to you who are thriving. I know many of us shouted out our moms in the beginning, but now that we've gone through some most of this presentation, is there anyone who's standing out to you that you wanna shout out? Some black women warriors who are thriving out in the world. I love Quinta, she's one of my favorite thriving leaders, but also my sister, she's out in the world thriving. She's a medical assistant. Do we wanna shout out anybody else? Anybody else in this moment? Oprah, yes, okay, thank you, Victoria. Anyone else? I also want to shout out Anosa again for handling tech, for being with us. Anyone else? We don't want to shout out anyone else. Someone deserves some hyping up. Rajay says, my best friend. Amazing. Yes, we got to hype up our friends too. Absolutely. All right, let's move on. All right, so we don't have time to engage in this activity today, but I do want to um, show you all um, an uh, awesome activity that I've done with um, my clients and other students around thinking about the future, right? And this is called Future Me, and I love this. I've done one for myself most recently. Okay, and let me go ahead and share my screen briefly, continue, okay? So this is a Future Me letter, right? And I put this in the chat and I hope you save this to your browser. And you can write a letter to yourself and you can send it in the future so that you can receive this right? Receive it, look back on it, and see how you're 
how you're thriving or how you want to thrive, right? This is just a reminder of where you are, how you want to really build your legacy. So this can be a part of your legacy building. So I encourage you to save this to your browser, even get started on this as you as we close out this session so that you can be in that thinking space. Remember, think, feel, and do the thinking space to build your thriving future, okay? Let's stop sharing here. Yeah, I love this activity. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm gonna revisit it again. I want multiple letters to myself, okay? So some affirmations for thriving. I want you to soak this in. I believe in my ability to thrive as a student. I can build and create a legacy that I'll be proud of. I am enough when I'm stressed. I will thrive despite systemic barriers and I am unapologetically free, right? So speaking of unapologetically free, I want us to talk a little bit about the conference and bring Victoria into the conversation so that we can wrap up and you all can learn more about some of the other workshops and programs that are available to you, okay? Yeah, we'll just go ahead and skip this and I'll have Victoria take it away. Thank you so much. That was so informative. I enjoyed everything. I took my little notes in my book right here as well. So thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, just quick about myself. My name is Victoria Smith. I'm a strategy analyst with UNCF's Institute for Capacity Building. A little bit about the Institute for Capacity Building. We partner with historically Black colleges and universities and predominantly Black institutions and their supporters and champions to advance Black higher education. We are rooted in the transformative history of HBCUs and work towards continuing that legacy. Um, I did want to take another moment to thank the Steve Fund and Thurgood Marshall as well for partnering with us to share this knowledge and you know, do something for the women during Women's History Month. Um, as was mentioned, we have one more webinar and we have a student conference coming up in April. So excited about that. Um, if you can scan the QR code, you can go ahead and register. Please tell your friends about it on campus. If we have any faculty here, please share it with your students. Um, yes, if you want to find out more information, please go to unapologeticallyfree.org and follow the social media UNCF uh, ICB, that's at sign UNCF ICB on all social media platforms. And once again, thank you all so, so much. Um, I know it's five o'clock right now, but if we can even leave the slide as people start to exit on the key takeaways, because I do want people to, <laughs> to see them and maybe even take a picture of them beforehand. So if we could go back to that slide, yes. So as everyone exits, I would encourage you to take a picture with your phone, take a screenshot of these key takeaways because there was so much powerful information that was shared with us today. And once again, we want to thank you for speaking with all of us today. Everybody have a great evening. Thank you, everyone. Remember to complete the Steve Fund survey and to register for the rest of the Unapologetically Free Conference. It's been a pleasure being with you. Hope these takeaways resonate with you around survival and thrival and legacy building and all the ways that you want to tend to your wellness and mental health. You got this. Happy, happy Women's History Month and take care.